Welcome to this very special sleep story, where you will be taken to one of the most magical places ever created. Before you embark on your adventure, let's begin with a guided breathing exercise known as 478. This will help to calm your body and relax your mind, which will then allow your imagination to flourish when we begin the story. Don't worry if you can't reach these numbers. Simply do what you can and enjoy the process of becoming more relaxed. Breathe in through the nose to a count of four. Hold for a count of seven. And exhale through the mouth to a count of eight. Again, breathe in to a count of four. Hold for seven. And out through the mouth for eight. Allow your worries and thoughts to leave your mind. This is your time. Do this breathing a few more times. Allow your breath to fall back to its natural rhythm. On your adventure, you will be surrounded by friends. These might be people from the wizarding world itself, or they could be your own friends, family, or anybody special to you. There are no limits here. Now, let's take a magical journey and spend Christmas Eve at Hogwarts. It is the morning of Christmas Eve and you are lying in your bed in your house dormitory. The sun is reflecting on your bed curtains which are the colours of your wizarding house. The fireplace 
is still glowing from last night. Oil paintings are hanging on the grey stone walls. And the subjects of these paintings are beginning to wake up themselves. All the other beds are empty, and most of your house must be in the common room. On each bedside table, there are piles of school books, some more dusty than others, and scraps of parchment with unfinished homework are spread over the floor. You see that on your bedside table is a fresh cup of hot tea, with a small tag on the handle. The tag reads, Homemade Enchanted Elven Tea. Merry Christmas, from the elves downstairs. You sit comfortably in your soft bed, with your drink in hand, as your eyes wander around the room, taking in the beautiful wooden panels, the old stone pillars, the Christmas decorations, and the small castle windows with beads of snow floating by. This is your home. The bedsheets are warm and cosy, and on a cool winter's morning, it is tempting to lie here all day. However, you have a busy day ahead of you, and so you decide to hop out of bed and get ready for the morning. You head downstairs, into the now empty common room, and straight out the portrait door. You make haste down the winding stone steps and through the long corridors. You know that the breakfast feast is about to begin. As you get closer to the great hall, you stop to admire the enormous Christmas tree in front of you. A dark emerald colour, covered in a variety of decorations. The tree is held up by a giant red cauldron, and there is a golden witch's hat perched at the very top. The smell of a hot breakfast is drifting out of the hall. Your patience gets the better of you, and you cannot resist any longer as you walk inside. The great hall is full of life. On the enchanted ceiling, you see a golden sunrise with a gentle snow, and the floating candles are providing a glowing archway above you. Students and teachers are mingling together, even across different houses. Further down the long wooden table, you spot a few of your friends who are waving at you with a wide smile, beckoning you to join them. You head over and join your friends.
you fill your plate with delicious food and your goblet with a refreshing drink. As you enjoy your breakfast, a rumour has passed down the table that the giant lake has frozen over, and at midday there will be an ice skating party. Your friend mentions a new potion they are working on, which will keep the whole body warm on a cold winter's day. They have asked for your help in finding their final ingredient, the feather of a phoenix. You glance over to the teacher's table at the end of the hall, and you spot the pure white beard of the headmaster, who, with a twinkle in his eye, gives you a gentle smile. You see his delicate hand wave his wand, and a piece of parchment in the shape of a small bird is flying over to you. You catch it out of the air above you. As you unfold the paper bird, something falls out and is floating down onto the table. A small red feather, mingled with yellow and orange. A phoenix feather. Your friend is speechless. You look back at the headmaster and give him a thankful smile. But how did he know? As the feast comes to an end, you follow your friend out of the great hall and they lead you down a thin secret passageway to the right that you are sure you have never used before. As you reach the end of the corridor, you watch in amazement as a large wooden door appears out of thin air. Your friend opens the door and you both walk inside. The room is enormous, as big as the great hall twice over. It is filled with old chairs and tables, large cabinets and paintings, as well as piles of old books, large wooden boxes and trinkets of gold, silver and copper. You look up to see thick white pillars coming down from the ceiling. However, there is only a quarter of these pillars above you, and they do not touch the floor. It feels like old magic that has been enchanted for many years. Your friend leads you through the maze-like room and you pass a tall marble statue of a centaur holding a chalice. You head round the corner and come to a small clearing of stone. Your friend tells you that this room is only usable for those who have great need of it. On the floor in front of you, there is a small grey cauldron bubbling away. Smoke rises from the cauldron in colours of red, green, blue and purple.
As you kneel down in front of the cauldron, you drop the feather above it, and it floats down into the potion. The feather begins to dissolve, and the bright green liquid becomes a whirlpool, morphing into a deep sapphire colour. The potion settles now, and sits completely still, like an idle lake, undisturbed and peaceful. It is ready. Your friend pours it into two large vials. You decide to try a small sip now. Instantly, you feel a new warmth trickle down your body. From your head, through your neck and shoulders, down your back, into your legs, and all the way down to your toes. You check your watch and realize it is nearly midday, and everyone else is bound to be at the lake. You put the vial into your pocket and leave this mysterious room. You begin to run down the corridor. Your footsteps are echoing through the stone tunnels. You finally come to the main door. It is twenty feet tall and made of solid iron with circular handles. Through the gap you can see fresh thick snow layering the castle grounds, which is glowing from the midday sun. You run outside and leap into the snow. Despite being midwinter, the sun's rays provide a gentle heat on your face, and your potion seems to be working its magic, as your entire body feels as though it is being warmed by a small fire. You start to wander down to the lake. The layer of snow crunches under your feet, and the air is cool and crisp. The giant willow tree over to your right has a layer of snow on its branches. The tree gives an almighty shudder, and you see the snow falling off and disappear into white dust as the willow's bare branches wrap around itself. As you come to the end of a small patch of trees, you see a few of the teachers are standing in a circle on the lake, gently waving their wands. Right before your eyes, you see the ice start to form together, pillar by pillar, and create a large stadium of ice. At the entrance is a tall archway of ice, with inscriptions carved on the top. The teachers turn to you all with a smile, 
and beckon for each and every one of you to go inside. Standing by the entrance is the headmaster, along with the head boy and girl. They are standing beside a large cooking pot, filled with what smells like hot chocolate. The headmaster calls you over, with that same mischievous glint in his eye. He asks if you would be so kind as to share the remainder of your new potion with him. He did provide the final ingredient after all, so you take the vial from your pocket and hand it to him. He removes the lid of the cooking pot and adds the rest of your potion to the hot chocolate. You share a knowing smile, and then the head girl spoons a ladle of chocolate into a tall tankard and hands it to you. You enter the arena as other students queue for their newly enchanted hot chocolate. As you emerge from the archway, you see an oval-like arena held up by huge pillars of ice. There are powerful enchantments at work here, and you can feel the magic in the air. Hanging from the top of the pillars are the four flags of each wizarding house. Their colours seem brighter than usual. The ice in the middle looks perfectly smooth, like a layer of silk. And in this arena are many seats which are carved from ice, but all of which have blankets thrown over them. As your gaze wanders around the arena, you take in the sapphire and grey, the crimson and gold, the emerald and silver, and the yellow and black, which are strung all around. You walk around the small path just outside the rink and find a seat with the rest of your house. A few of the students begin to take to the ice and start to skate around the arena, laughing and joking as they slip and slide while finding their feet. Others begin to cast magic spells, and bright blue spectrals appear in the form of their favourite animals. These animals run happily around the arena. They jump over their wizard's heads, and all of them begin playing together. If you like, you can cast yours now too. You know the spell. A stream of blue emerges from your wand and takes the form of your favourite animal. It dances around you playfully and you feel a sense of comfort as you watch them join in with the others and you can't help but smile. A 
few of your friends are getting ready to go onto the ice rink. You are hesitant at first, but one of your friends kneels down and casts a quiet enchantment on your skates. This is very advanced magic, and so long as you wear these skates today, it will be impossible to fall. A new excitement floods over you as you head out onto the ice. You skate at whatever pace you feel comfortable with. The cool breeze is refreshing on your skin, but your body is warm and your feet are steady. You haven't felt this free in a long time. As you skate, you pass couples dancing together. Students playing games on the ice and the bright blue animals running and weaving through all of the action. As the day turns to mid-afternoon, there is an announcement from the deputy head teacher. There will be a spontaneous trip into the nearby wizarding village, where you can explore the streets and shop to your heart's content. You head back out into the snow-covered grounds of the castle. The headmaster has arranged for magic sleighs to take you into the village. And you watch them, racing up the hill toward you all. A small wooden sledge slides up to your feet and slowly turns itself around, ready for you to take your seat. You get yourself comfortable on the sledge and take hold of the rope in front of you. In that moment, your sledge sets off down the embankment, along with all the others, as you make your way down to the village. The sledge steers by itself, and you control the speed by using the rope in your hands. You might decide to race a friend, or to simply coast along nicely at your own pace.
as you reach the bottom of the hill. You can see a small village with wood-panelled buildings that have thatched roofs and a layer of snow. Warm yellow light is glowing in many windows. You see two tall Christmas trees acting as a gateway into the village. And behind the village you see white hills in the distance. You feel a sense of homely comfort and warmth as you begin to enter the village. The cobbled stone paths have a clear walkway with piles of snow on each side. Decorations go from house to house and form a colourful canopy above you. Children are playing and wizards are walking round the streets and talking outside shops and houses. Musicians stand round a small fountain which is in the very centre of the village. In one window, you can see a collection of broomsticks and wizard clothing. In another, there are bubbling cauldrons and smoking pots which are stirring themselves. Another has small furry creatures with big welcoming eyes. One in particular catches your eye. It is the smallest of the group, but by far the most excited. It gazes up at you and hops around happily. You pass the sweet shop window, filled with multicoloured lights and a grand display of all your favourite magical sweets. As you pass the local tavern, the door swings open and a blast of warm air hits you with the smell of their home-brewed butterscotch beer. You have time to visit one shop today, and then everyone is to meet in the tavern. As it's Christmas Eve, you're feeling indulgent and you decide to go with your friends to the sweet shop. You enter the sweet shop. And you are greeted with a warm smile from an elderly man and woman behind the counter. The shop is busy with both students and customers alike. As you wander around the colourful store, you can smell all of the sweets and chocolate. The shelves are twice your height and lined with various coloured packets. Hundreds of fantastic treats packed neatly together. The elderly lady approaches you with a smile. 
she holds out a brown paper bag, and as it opens, a beautiful smell emerges. You reach in, take out a boiled sweet, and ask what it is. She tells you it's a new recipe, designed to give you whatever flavour you are most craving. She thinks that she has finally perfected it. You imagine what you'd most like to taste, and you put the sweet in your mouth. Slowly, you begin to taste this wonderful flavour that you desire. And the more you eat, the stronger it becomes. As the sweet finally dissolves, you are filled with a warming comfort. You look out through the square panelled windows and into the cobbled street outside. Directly opposite you, you see that same furry animal from before, still looking at you with its big, hopeful eyes. You would love to go over and meet this animal, and you think that if you're quick, you might just have time. You thank the shopkeeper as you quietly slip away and run across the street. You enter the pet shop, which has a wooden floor, tall wooden pillars, and more traditional decorations. The atmosphere is calmer here. Many of the animals are sleeping, and the shop is only a few minutes from closing for the day. As you approach the small animal, it begins again to hop around excitedly. From behind you, you hear footsteps, and as you turn, you see the kind face of the shopkeeper smiling at you. They walk past you, unlock the cage, and remove the tiny animal. They gesture to hold out your hand, and they place the animal in your palm. As you gently cup this small creature in your hand, it curls up instantly as you stroke its tiny head. Without any hesitation, you pay the shopkeeper, and you place your new animal on your shoulder. You hear a knock at the window, and there are your friends, beckoning you to come outside. It's time to visit the local tavern. You walk back into the street and head towards the tavern. Tiny flakes of white land on your face and your jacket as you shield your new friend from the snow with your hand. As you swing the door of the tavern open, the warm air and the smell of butterscotch beer are still as powerful as before. When you arrive inside, you come face to face with the headmaster, who has been waiting for you. It seems you are a little late. For a moment, your stomach flutters with nerves. But just then, you see his face soften, and his smile welcomes you once again. His eyes flick to your shoulder, and he asks 
what you've decided to call your new friend. He gives the animal a gentle stroke under its chin and then invites you to join the table where you find the others are beginning to take their seats. The table is made of a thick, dark wood and is long enough to fit everyone on it. Either that or it has been enchanted to do so. Dotted around the tavern are oil lanterns and candles are hanging on the walls and resting on the tables. In a quiet corner of the room there is a group of folk musicians playing a gentle tune which underscores the atmosphere. A few wizards sit at the bar ordering their regular drink. Many of the workers are bringing out large trays packed full of slender glasses. In the glasses is a bright orange liquid with a pearly white foam on top. One of these drinks is placed in front of you and you take in the sweet smell rising from the glass. You bring the glass to your lips and take your first sip. The drink warms your entire body and the sweet texture of the foam is a delicious blend with the thick orange liquid. You join in with the festivities, the jokes and the conversations which are mingling around the table as you enjoy your hearty drink and while your new friend takes a nap on your shoulder. The folk group begin to play a lively jig and more and more people get up to dance. You might decide to join in or if you'd prefer, you can sit and watch.
word is passed round that it's time to head back to the castle for the Christmas feast. You walk back into the street and place your furry friend in your top pocket to keep them warm. The sun is setting now and as you look down the cobbled street you see the purple and red sky illuminated by the golden sun as it begins to sink lower behind the thatched buildings of the village. The street lights provide a gentle yellow glow, guiding you all on your short walk back to the castle. Your body feels warm and comfortable, and the air is mild. As you walk back to the castle through the snow, you reminisce on what has been a truly magical day so far. Then, as you emerge over the top of the hill, you see it. Standing proudly, backed by the infinite glitter of the stars, is the castle which you call home. Tall towers of old but immaculate stonework are protruding from the main structure. Long windows overlooking the grounds are glowing with the soft light of the lanterns inside. It is a perfect sight and one that you will never forget. You arrive at the main doors. One by one, you enter the castle and follow the group into the great hall once again. There are hundreds of more decorations and in the air, you can smell cinnamon and apple, roasted vegetables and freshly baked mince pies. To your right, the enormous wood fire burns and glows, warming the entire room.
The ceiling takes the form of the night sky. Shooting stars dart above you. Everyone begins to take their seats. And when the last person has sat down, the headmaster stands up and taps his wand three times. Right before your eyes, you see an entire Christmas feast appear in front of you. Music, laughter and talk fills the air as you begin to enjoy your Christmas feast. You pass small pieces of food to your new friend, who is sitting comfortably on your shoulder, and you take in the beauty of this moment. As the feast comes to an end, you leave the great hall feeling warm, full and satisfied. You head back up the castle stairs and through the corridors. Finally, you reach the common room portrait, which is wide open as more people are filtering back inside. You wander over to your favourite armchair and sit down. You place your feet on a stool and pull a nearby blanket over your legs. You take out your wand and point it at the fireplace. In a split second, the fire is in full glow. You sit completely relaxed. And you let your eyes wander around the room, taking in what has been a perfect day in a perfect place. A few people are sharing gifts. Some are playing different games and sharing out small cakes and treats. You see a couple of your friends 
are playing an intense game of wizard's chess. You have been invited to play, but tonight you are in the mood to just sit and watch. Your furry friend is lying in your lap and fast asleep. As more and more people begin to head to their rooms, the common room becomes quieter and even more peaceful. Your eyes begin to feel heavy and your body is warm and comfortable. You think it might be time to head up to bed. You take your blanket and bid those who are still awake a good night. Your animal is still asleep and safe in your hand. When you enter the bedroom, there is a warm glow from the oil lamp and a gentle fire is crackling. You place your new friend on your bedside table as you get yourself into comfy clothes ready for bed. From your bed you can see the window that looks out over a section of the grounds. You gaze out in wonder as the moonlight illuminates the snow-covered grass. And in the distance, you can see the lake surrounded by trees. The stars are in full glow, and it seems like they are providing their own magical sleep song, just for you. You lie in this enchanted bed that feels like you are lying on a cloud. You feel soft fur caress your arm and you see that your new friend has nestled themselves in the crook of your arm.
This truly is the most magical place on earth. And it is your home. You are safe and you are warm. Your body is heavy and completely free. Your thoughts begin to fade as you drift off to sleep.